Harry's Wife, Part 71.4 No, not the facade! We turn to an article by closeronline.co.uk which tells us Rocked by sex scandal, Royal Insider Harry's wife's horrified there will be tense meeting about her future with Harry. As fresh fury around Prince Andrew makes headlines again, royal expert Jonathan Sarsadoti says that Harry's wife and Prince Harry face conflict as it threatens their brand. Now, of course, as you are aware, that recently Prince Andrew has faced legal action brought by one of the victims that allege is that he molested and raped her when she was underage, and Prince Andrew is in the pipeline. I will be talking further about that presently, so you can look forward to that. But this particular article, written by Lily Smith, focuses on the comments and observations of Jonathan Sarsadoti and the fact that the recent allegations against Prince Andrew may well affect the facade. Now, of course, some of you may have been in a situation where you're giving somebody a right good hiding, and they curl up in a ball with their hands over their face, shrieking, no, not the face, not the face. Well, in this situation, Harry's wife would be shrieking, no, not the facade, if she actually knew what she was. But her narcissism, unconsciously on the inside, will be saying this, looking out for any threats to it. And, of course, good old Randy Andy and his antics do pose a potential risk to the facade. But what does the article have to say? She'd looked relaxed and happy earlier this month as she spoke to fans in a video released on her <clears throat> 40th birthday, launching a new charity campaign to empower women. But insiders say Harry's wife faces a turbulent time after a new royal drama last week. It emerged her husband, Prince Harry's uncle, Prince Andrew, is being sued over allegations he sexually assaulted a young woman in the early 2000s and knew she was a victim of sex trafficking. Lawyers have claimed that the case brought by Virginia Roberts has the potential to go to court, where Andrew, 61, could be quizzed over his sex life. Well, better set aside a few weeks to do that then. He has always strongly denied the allegations since they surfaced in 2019, and Buckingham Palace labelled them false and without foundation. The claims are the latest in an ongoing investigation into sex trafficking charges made against Andrew's disgraced former friend, financier and connected, convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, who before his suicide in a jail cell was accused of running a vast network of underage girls. Andrew was seen arriving at Balmoral to meet his mother, the Queen, last week, accompanied by ex-wife Sarah Fergie Ferguson, 61, and days later his daughter Eugenie, 31, joined them. Now, royal commentator and broadcaster Jonathan Sarsadoti, who has accompanied many royals on tour, including Prince William in the Middle East in 2018, says that the scandal has left Harry, 37, and Harry's wife... <clears throat> 40, who've started a new life in Los Angeles since stepping down from royal duties, in a very awkward situation. He says, The Prince Andrew scandal will be one of the biggest challenges the royals have ever faced, but it also has the potential to be damaging to Harry and his wife. They've been working extremely hard on their new facade, uh, I beg your pardon, brand, using their royal connection as a springboard. They are inextricably linked to the palace. So, this scandal is a big blow for them and could ruin the reputation they've built up, especially around their work in empowering women. It's a matter that's totally out of their control. Harry's wife will be having complex, tense and difficult crisis talks with Harry behind the scenes about their future and how to address this without their reputation being affected. How they deal with it will be telling, well, I can tell you now there won't be any complex, tense or difficult crisis talks whatsoever. Naturally, the allegations against Prince Andrew, of very serious in nature, are of concern for the royal family as a whole. And, by extension, they could affect the facade of Harry's wife, because she is linked to the royal family, although she has tried to remove herself away from it. Of course, privately, 
she will utilize behaviors such as Andrew as a reason for why she was right to distance herself from them. It will provide her with validation that she was doing the right thing, guided by her narcissism that believes that everything she does is correct and right. There will be a concern that it will impact upon the facade, but I don't actually see it as one that would be taken ultimately too seriously. In effect, there will be yet more PR rolls out, highlighting the apparent good that Harry's wife does. As yet more bananas of empowerment are written upon, there will probably be a new book that has been written that it can also grace the table and prop up the laptop because nobody will want to buy it. And there will be various other banal and transparent initiatives announced, all in the name of maintaining that ever so important facade. Andrew's behaviour does represent a threat to it, but I don't regard it as one that is ultimately a hugely serious one. Steps will be taken to continue to bolster it amongst Team Sussex. Of course, initially, there will be concerns raised by it, but it won't result in complex, tense and difficult crisis talks with Harry. It will mean that Harry has to sit there on the end of the couch with his head bowed as he's reminded of how his stupid fucking family has caused another fucking problem for us. And if it wasn't for all of those dolts, we wouldn't have had to leave in the first place. Thank goodness I was the one that was sensible enough to realise that we needed to be away from all of those poisonous individuals. Do you see how right I am now, Harry? Say, yes, Harry's wife, three times. Harry will be browbeaten. This will be used as an example as how she's right and everybody else is wrong, that it was the correct decision for her to remove them from the poisonous influences of the royal family, given the behaviours of Andrew. But of course, at the same time, they will still utilise their titles. They will still continue to use those connections as part of the hypocrisy. There is a risk of facade presented by this occurrence, however... It isn't one which is going to be something that can safely be said to be rocked by sex scandal. First of all, the allegations about Andrew have been well known for some time, so it's hardly a surprise. So it's not going to rock anything. But of course, this publication utilises that to draw the reader's view to it. And it then, of course, provides an opportunity for further observation. Uh, the article continues, since moving to the States... Harry's wife and Harry forged a lucrative media empire, making multi-million pound deals with Netflix, Spotify and Apple TV. There have also been sensational interviews where they've spoken of racism and neglect over mental health issues within the palace, bringing up the past. Harry's wife, mum to Archie II and two-month-old Lilibet, has been a keen activist for women's rights over the years, revision of history, being a UN women's advocate before she became a royal. She has made speeches on International Women's Day, and she and Harry visited a sexual violence and, charity, and abuse charity in Brighton in 2018, facade management. Her birthday charity initiative, called Plagiarise 4040, saw Harry's wife and 40 friends call for people to donate 40 minutes of their time to help mentor women around the world who had left the workforce during the pandemic, facade management. Harry's wife was reportedly left horrified, false horror, when the scandal around Prince Andrew broke in 2019, and even more so over his infamous Newsnight interview, see A Very Royal Narcissist Part 5, where he drew criticism from viewers for his lack of empathy, correct, he's a narcissist, and claims that a medical condition meant he couldn't sweat, utter, utter horseshit, so he couldn't have had a sweaty encounter with Virginia, as she had claimed. And Jonathan says that Harry's wife will feel torn over whether to voice her views given the royal connection, he says, I'm sure she's just as horrified now. No, she won't be. She's always been outspoken when it comes to feminist issues. And her birthday charity initiative focuses on women, so it's definitely a conflict in Harry's wife's agenda to be even loosely connected to the Prince Andrew scandal. I'm sure she'd like to use this opportunity to stand up for women, to make a statement, share her support for victims of sexual abuse and encourage women to speak out. But on the other hand, that would draw attention to their link with the royal family. Of course, it must be said, Prince Andrew hasn't been proved guilty of anything. However, he continues by stating that Harry's wife could also find herself in an awkward situation with Princess Eugenie, one of the few members of the royal family she and Harry are reportedly still close to. Earlier this month, she revealed Eugenie to be a mentor as part of her charity initiative. 
part of the coterie. And Eugenie congratulated her on a big day, posting happy birthday, dear Harry's wife. Jonathan adds, their closeness with Eugenie provides a solid bridge back to the royal family, an ally almost. They simply cannot afford to sever ties with her. But in light of the allegations made against Eugenie's father, she might not be the best person for them to associate with. Harry's wife and Harry would have to tread carefully. They wouldn't have half as much global interest if they weren't part of the firm. They wouldn't have any global interest if they weren't part of the firm. But this scandal proves how tricky it is to be royal while trying to do things your own way. Ultimately, of course, she will be able to utilise this by distancing herself, withdrawal and asserting control, and then there will come further examples of how she apparently supports women as all part of the maintenance of that facade. The facade is hugely important to the mid-range narcissist. And with a middle-mid-range narcissist, it is used in terms of believing to be helpful, to care about other people. And people are triangulated with this facade. The primary victim that is the intimate partner primary source. Other people who criticise the narcissist. The narcissist points to all the good that they do. They utilise that facade to say, your allegations are completely without merit. Look, I'm a good person. I do all of these things for other people. What you suggest simply cannot be true. And therefore, the protection of the facade is hugely important. The narcissism does its utmost to maintain it. But understand that when it comes to a straight fight between the necessity of asserting control and the facade, the facade will have to break and crumble. Control is everything. A lot of the time, the narcissism operates to ensure that an alternative method of the assertion of control and the drawing of fuel is achieved so as to preserve the facade. So, for instance, rather than punch somebody in the face at a party, uh, the narcissist sulks and withdraws, or makes a snide remark that only one person can hear, rather than erupting into shouting and screaming. The facade is maintained, and the assertion of control is achieved in an alternative method. However, ultimately, where that control must be achieved, and if it cannot be done, Without the facade breaking, then that is what must happen. For Harry's wife, her narcissism will continue to protect the facade to ensure that it remains a key residual benefit. Coming up next, the death stare. More analysis about the way that Harry's wife looks at other people. <laughs> 